Hey everybody, welcome back to Word Balloon and welcome to the weekend. John Sutris here. Uh, we are continuing our review of Star Trek Picard, me and Franco. And uh, thank you very much for listening and thank you for your responses to our uh, critiques. We're trying to be funny, but we're also, uh, you know, telling you what we like and what we don't like. And uh, so far, again, in general, I'm enjoying the story enough. And God, it's great to see Patrick Stewart back. But uh, we got our questions. We got our confusion with the story. So uh, we'll see what you think of episode four when you respond to what we have to say. This episode of Word Balloon brought to you by Aftershock Comics. Shaking things up at your local comic shop right now. Uh, great new titles like the John Lehman's The Man Who Effed Up Time and Zach Thompson's Undone by Blood. God Killers by Mark Sable to go along with favorites like Baby Teeth with Donny Cates and Gary Brown. And of course there's Dark Ark from Cullen Bunn and Juan Doe and uh, Dark Red from Tim Seeley, A Walk Through Hell from Garth Ennis, Animosity from Marguerite Bennett and Raphael De La Tour. Go to their website, you'll find great books and uh, genre-bending story ideas that are waiting for you. You'll find full story descriptions, preview art pages, and how to get these books through the diamond codes to order through your local shop at AfterShockComics.com. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. Our review of Star Trek Picard Episode 4 on Word Balloon. Are you going to do the intro music? Sure, we can. All right, here we go. <laughs> you definitely have to learn the new entrance. The, the oh, new, no, uh, that's. <laughs> I think that's more complicated. I think that would require more than two lips to actually be able to uh, perform. I still want you to try, though, I think. <laughs> no, I don't think I could, really, but I appreciate you saying that and everything. Well, welcome again to the... Uh, the Star Trek Picard review show on uh, here on Word Balloon and the Oh Yeah podcast. Although I like Mitch Halleck's name for it, let's call it the Picardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yes, I like right. that. I like that a lot. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, it's me and Franco. Franco, welcome as always. Hello. How are I really you? Uh, seriously thank you for doing this consistently. We're on our fourth week now. We only have six more weeks. I thought it, I thought trying. it was eleven because I was looking at eleven. Uh, it was. Um, I was looking on IMTB and I was looking at the cast list, and they had Patrick Stewart in eleven episodes, and everyone else wasn't in ten or eleven; they were in less than ten. So I'm like, oh, there must be an extra episode or whatever. And no, they they're already counting the second first episode of the second season on IMDb on uh, just on the cast oh. list. Oh, I see. Okay, but yeah, I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, Jesus, all right. too complicated. Yeah. Oh well, you know why they did that? Probably because probably. they renewed this for the second season before the first season even aired. So that's why they probably put it up there. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, there was confirmation of it being renewed, so to speak. Yeah. I'm with you. Uh, yeah. But, man, we've gotten a lot of uh, comments that I'm, sh- I'm happy to go through uh, later on. But, uh, yeah, right yeah. right now uh, let's let's talk about the, the new episode. I, I, I messaged you, well, obviously spoilers, because we're going to talk about everything, but I messaged you um, earlier today (laughs) that the whole episode was spoiled, the ending of the whole episode was spoiled for me as soon as I got up and I, you know, when I log on to Facebook, the first post on there was from somebody saying, oh my gosh, seven of nine, and she says this, this, that. I'm like, (sighs) dude, (laughs) what the hell? Yeah, that's not cool. So so I was annoyed, but... I watched um, it at seven o'clock this morning, and and again... Uh, let me stick with positives. Thank you, CBS All Access, for posting it as early as you do. And it, on my thing, it says it was posted late last night. So, I mean, oh, had a maybe Wednesday that's day. why the spoiler was up. Yeah. Probably, yeah. And I'm sure there are people that are staying up late to see it. Um, but, yeah, it's well, that's like that stupid whole first. Like, that's your yeah. comment, really, first? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. But anyway. Um, yeah, but and let's we may as well start with it because it is so short. You know, special guest star Jerry Ryan. Yeah, for 30 seconds. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. And, I mean, you may as well have kept it a secret and not put her in the credits, dumbasses, until the end. <laughs> so as soon as I'm happy that it's out early, I would say dumbass for letting us know that Jerry Ryan's in it. And literally in the last 30 seconds of story, there she is. Yeah. Where'd what she a- come from? Well, of what course, yeah. Well, of why course. Is she, why is she there? Well, of course. Yeah, yeah great. And then that's fine. Episode five. I'm cool. I'm cool right. with that. That's okay. Yeah, absolutely. And a nice cliffhanger. That's fine. Good. 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 Whatever. But I got to be honest. Uh, on balance, a little disappointing episode. Kind of boring. 
Really? I, I kind of liked it. There, there were some things that, that made me annoyed, but on, on the whole, I'm like, oh, he's getting his uh, Picardians of the Galaxy together. Right. And uh, yeah. this is his Worf character, the, uh, uh, I want to call her, uh, I want to call him Eleanor, but it's just Eleanor. Eleanor. But Eldor, want, right? Yeah, yeah, he's he's Highlander Highlander Romulan Romulan Highlander. Right. So I did. I got to admit that I did like his setup. I did like him. You know, seeing him as a kid, sure. I loved that. You know, he was reading the the Three Musketeers, oh, and he was uh, yes, Alexander was Dumas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, indeed. Yeah, I'm disappointed you didn't pronounce it the correct way. Dumbass, Alexander Dumbass. dumbass. Yeah. Exactly from Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> exactly, Alexander Dumbass. Um, no, and I agree with that. And also, I liked um, the setup of a little more Romulan um, religion or mythology, and we got the warrior nuns, which is a great image in your brain of warrior mm-hmm. nuns. And that, and and I and I'm I'm cool with Eleanor for the most important part in terms of being this uh, character that uh, was raised by nuns and kind of out of place. Again, we're four episodes in. And we got a little bit more of, okay, these were Romulan refugees left on <laughs> whatever planet it is. Uh, some, Va- Vash, Vash, yeah, Vash, 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 man, they, get, they really got Vash on the brain. I hope right. Vash, I hope the archaeologist <laughs> Vash does show up eventually. Jop Vash, Vash terrain. Oh, no. That wouldn't, that wouldn't make sense. Well, and I guess, man, maybe <laughs> that's, may, but actually maybe the Vash planet is tied to the Jop Vash in some way. And their ancient Maybe. order or whatever. Maybe they'll go back and the nuns are going to reveal part of the deep, dark secret or whatever. But again, I don't know. I just want to know a little bit more about the people that are running the Borg Cube. And I did. Did I don't know if I mentioned this on the last. I don't think I did. I, I finally figured out from the last episode. After the last episode. Because I watched it like another five times. I said I was like John Nash from A Beautiful Mind. Like all that's missing <laughs> is the conspiracy map with the yarn from all the different pins in the map and stuff. Okay, this is connected to this, this is connected to that. But I'm like, who is running this goddamn cube? And finally, after watching the third episode for the upteenth time, the trill that Soji is helping, getting into her coveralls, and they go and they hear the big orientation speech, stay out of the gray areas, whatever. Um, while she's getting dressed, she says, I, um, the, uh, the Russian, the, the Russian, the Romulan Free State... Uh, rejected my application, but now six months later they finally approved it. And I'm like, okay, so they're in charge of the cube, but like, are they again? And obviously, the Romulan Empire is splintered off, and we learned a little bit more of that here. But yeah, I mean, it's just like, so are yeah, they? But with, with what Hugh Hugh said, tell him uh, in the prior prior episode, wasn't he in charge of all that overseeing the of reclamation? The, the, yeah, yeah. So that's still kind of like, is he working for the Romulans or is it something different? Right. Or is he being tolerated because they need him? Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, and that's, and I don't even mind that as an, as a mystery in terms of what are their real intentions with Hugh or Soji or the Trill Doctor and everything beyond, I guess, the basic obvious of, and again, I don't believe it, that, oh, we don't do, we don't do cybernetics at all. We, you know, we don't do AI. Right. We don't do any of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, um, I'm still confused by like, again, how much does the regular galaxy know and why are humans and trills being allowed to work on this cube if they don't have the facade of, Hey, we're just, you know, after the tragedy, we're trying to work with the rest of the galaxy and do a positive thing. So yeah, please, you know, trills and, and humans are welcome to help us out. Or is it the other where, they would be suspicious and that the Federation might be suspicious of Soji if they believe she was a real person and be like, hey, what the hell is this human, you know, doing working for the Romulans? You know what I mean? Right. Well, he did, um, um, Romulan Spock did say, <laughs> yes, uh, cause I'm, hor- I'm horrible at names. Yeah. Yes. Um, he did say that they, they've been, they've been studying her or, or the sister said something like you've been studying this so, or her, right, your so, whole yeah. life. Oh, right. And and he said it was right at the end of the conversation between the two of them. And he said, "I have to be careful, or she will be activated." And then you know the sister, because I only saw it once, so forgive me. So but, have I, by um, the way, and shame on us, I guess, for the purposes of this episode. And I guess we'll we'll watch it more because yeah, I 
I didn't have time. I did like three word balloons today. So but right. go on. Ooh, good future stuff. Yes, but um, <laughs> you know, she said she said uh, you know that may, that's what we want is we want to kill them all. Is she referring to synthetics? Is she referring to something else? Like by activating her, they're gonna you know kill or plan to kill somebody else. Um, and then he admits that she's the destroyer. Right. So so yeah, all of that kind of comes in. And it's like ooh. Who are we killing? What are we doing? Are they killing synths? Siths? Or is it synths? Synths. Synthetics? Synths, like yeah. synthetics, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So that that was all very intriguing to me. Well, all right, should I should I save my wild hair uh, theory moving forward till a little, little later, or should I say it now? No, I'll do now. All, all right. right. I believe, regarding the synths, two things. One, that, uh, and obviously we're already in spoiler territory, so, you know, this is my theory of where it's going. Bruce Maddox is going to be revealed to also be a secret Romulan all along, going back to even, you know, the second... Well, he's season. got the hidden, the yes, hidden and, ears. Well, no, but, like, um, well, there was, uh, first of all, like, that technology, again, of changing uh, alien races goes back to the original yeah. series. Right. So that's no big deal. But, no, in the right. same way that uh, or they're going to retcon Measure of the Man, that even then Bruce oh, Maddox was a Romulan spy within the Federation... And that he's always had this nefarious plan regarding data. And he was much, I mean, he was definitely uh, an adversary at the beginning of the Measure of a Man episode, which, again, I'm sure all of you listening to this have likely seen again. I don't know if Franco has. I can't recommend no. it enough because, it, like, really watching that really does kind of explain Bruce Maddox, you know, completely. Uh, up to this story and everything, and it's you know again a lot of the same uh, themes. But, but the the the, the Daystrom Institute where Allison Westwing is working, yeah, Agonist, um, yeah, yeah. Ag- Agonist, Agonist. Um, wasn't that all um, based on Maddox's um, yeah work? Some of that. Oh no, that I think well. yeah, I think he's been a secret Romulan all along in the way that uh, in real history, espionage history. There was a British intelligence officer named uh, Ken Philby and that had been working for the British since the 40s. And finally, in the 80s, literally, he defected to the Soviet Union and it was proven that he was a double agent all the, the whole time. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, they, there's that group called the Cambridge Spies. And he was he was one of the four of those group that really were KGB agents from, from the start and infiltrating Brit- British, intelli- British intelligence. And I think that's that's what I'm that's my prediction about Maddox was yeah I mean and that's like they said uh, that there might be intelligence officers in, in the highest levels of Starfleet yeah in, in Starfleet and everything and it's like well, well there they you kind go. of are alluding to that with with uh, well, yeah well they're not system. alluding it they're hitting yeah. it over well, the head yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. Commodore O uh-huh. yeah. yeah so that's why I'm like yeah that makes sense He's just uh, just like Rizzo is really Narek's sister and I forget her name. And is is kind of a de, uh, derivative of Narek. They're very they're very uninspired. Everything's Vosh. Everything's Narek. I don't know. <laughs> but, I, I uh, oh, like wait, that. I got I, oh. th- Let me oh, yeah, finish the other half of my my theory because it's connected still with the synths. I believe that Agonis is going to be revealed to also be a synth. Ooh. And that she is going to have uh, a twin out there somewhere. And that when she is act, and by the way, that's why she was able to kill the the uh, uh, Tashviar or whatever the fuck it was called, the Tal Tal Shiar uh, agent, so easily. Oh, how about that? Interesting, interesting. So those are my two. Yeah, the, the I don't know why, and and I I kind of hope I'm wrong because if I'm figuring this shit out in the third episode, then they then again bad writing. Right. Because <laughs> it's poor man's uh, Blade Runner at the end of the day. Well, I mean, a little bit of it is is conjecture on your part. Oh, so, no, again, yeah. I don't deny that, and I, well, I like I, I said, I, I will have no smugness other than, right. damn, I boy, I solved that Rubik's cube faster than that Romulan in the Psycho Ward. Right. And but what I'm saying is, you're you're picking up on things that they're putting in the episode, like her being able to handle that Romulan weapon and all that stuff. So, yeah. Well, maybe. and also, I even have a further one when when uh, Agonis is uh, reading. Asimov, and he goes, tea? What kind of tea would you like? And she's like, Earl Grey? Like, is that what you like? 
because I'm wired somewhere deep in my programming. I'm supposed to be as likable to you as possible. I knew I liked you the moment I saw you. Oh, boy. Man, you're good at this. This is what you I'm need, saying. You know, I'm you like, need a different host for this. Well, you that and, well, and, and, <laughs> and her and, and how, how she implores at the end of, of, of the third episode, you need me on this ship. Because I'm a robot expert. And yeah, of course they do. And it's all that's absolutely true. But I could just see a M. Night Shyamalan twist coming uh, as far as, uh, you know, that they think is like a brilliant. Ah! <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, all right. <laughs> you like that? Ah! Ah, ah, ah. That's what I'm going to do if they actually do reveal that while I'm watching it. <laughs> do you ever I'll read record myself. <laughs> The Spencer novels and Spencer for Hire. I don't think they ever did it on the TV show. But every now and then, someone would like say something that would make something click in his head, and he'd go, "Aha!" And they'd like <laughs> stop what they were saying and get a confused look, like, "What do you mean? What are you saying? No, nothing. Never mind. Keep going." But yeah, literally, it's <laughs> that's ah, <laughs> that's like Fozzie Bear like coming to a conclusion. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> so there you go. So that's my. Those are my two wild hair uh, predictions. As, as far I like as them. All right. Yeah, I, no, I like it's, them, it, and hopefully, but hopefully they won't happen. Hopefully like they won't happen because, again, I find them trite. And I'm kind of <laughs> embarrassed that I'm thinking in such a trite way, but I don't know. I don't know. And also, all right, how about uh, I like Rios's third. Uh, well, um, actually, yeah, what's there were a, two. why do they all look like him? Well, I, I, but well, whatever, they do. And it's so funny because initially watching the third episode, I'm like, no, they kind of look alike. I'm sure it's somebody different. And then it's like, oh, no, it's obviously definitely the same actor. Yep. Whatever. That's fun. I got no problem with that. But I, I yeah, do but question the need. he makes a big deal about hating them all. What's that? He does make a, de- a big deal about hating them. <laughs> yeah, so why would you keep it in your own yeah. image or whatever? I don't know. Unless, unless they were programmed by someone else, and that's well, why yeah. he hates them. Yeah, or yeah. whatever. Maybe it'd be more, you know, maybe I can't work with other people, so I'll work with myself. And then he realizes, yeah, but I hate me. <laughs> but also, all right, I understand having a navigator. I Well, actually, I really don't. You would think that, uh, you know, automatic pilot or, the once again, computer, right. you know, yeah. hot left or whatever, and it's a small enough ship. Ship, do you need an emergency hospitality program or aid or whatever it is? The right. EMA, well, yeah. you never know when you're going to have, you know, when you're going to need finger sandwiches. So I'm okay with that. Are, are there enough um, clean towels in everybody's room? Okay, I'm going to go away now. I left a mint on that. I do want pillow. to. I do want to change um, my Alexa opening to computer, so this way it's more like Star Trek in my house whenever I great. ask Alexa something. Uh, I told you when when I have Alexa or what actually Siri Siri calls me Batman. I'm sorry, Batman. I can't do that. Yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> you know, she she's my own Hazel. Siri's my own Hazel. Hazel, and that by the way cracks me up. One one of the people like, why are you calling him Hazel and Alfred? It's like lighten up, Francis. All right, I'm having yeah. fun. Uh, you know, we're teasing. And I well, like those yeah, actors, too. And I like those characters. Yeah, I'm going to start calling Elnor sister boy. Um, well, I'm going to stick with Eleanor. Yeah. <laughs> we just need that extra <laughs> eye. Eleanor, gee, I think you're swelling off. Because they, uh, they, didn't the Romulans call him that when he was running to Picard at the very beginning? Were they calling him Eleanor? They, no, they were calling him sister boy. Oh, sister boy. He said in Romulan, he said, bite me. <laughs> that guy. That's all I remember was the bite me part. That's very <laughs> funny. No, I, I, that's fine, and I liked him. You know, hey, you didn't. How <laughs> many he laps off the guy's head? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's the part that bothered me. Not not the lopping off the head. I I know why he did that, but uh, and I thought that was cool. But uh, that whole you know, Picard lands on on Vashti or whatever this planet right. is. You right. know, we were led to believe it was Free Cloud, but it wasn't obviously. Right. Right. Um, but he he goes up, sidles up to that bar, you know, where it's Romulans only, right. And then he goes to the the, the sister duns, uh, and then he comes back and he's like, you know, he's got seven minutes to kill, so I'm just going to try and get all these Romulans to kill me. It, it was a, <laughs> it was a little annoying. Like he pulls the sign down and he yeah, goes bad in. Yeah, bad writing. Bad writing. And I'm Francis. thinking, and I'm thinking, you know, if if you had let on after this, because I, w- I was going with it, but if he had let on afterwards to say. Um, I knew you'd be, you know, I, you'd, you'd show up to, to help me out type thing. Like, if he knew Eleanor was going to show up. Right. And that's right. why he was doing it. But he didn't, you know, and he right. scolds the guy, you know, he scolds him for killing. And I get why, but, you know, I was waiting for, you know, some line or something like, I knew you were going to show up or I knew you wouldn't let me down type thing. 
But he didn't. And why did he get into a massive fight with that senator and the other guys? Like, what was that all about? I don't know. Well, I'll go further with the Romulans only um, sign. This this is a Romulan refugee planet. Right. And I don't know if there's an indigenous species on the planet, another humanoid species. There didn't seem to be. Right. Again, I'm going to have to rewatch it, I suppose, and see if I can find other humans or anybody else working on there. And it's kind of, you know, it's a shithole planet, as our president would say. Right. Why are we helping these shithole planets? Either, either that or, or, you know, the senator did say that you, you know, we, we saw your speech, you brought a tear to our right. eye, you showed right. up with ships, and then you brought us here, and then you basically abandoned us here. Right. Well, that's so what I'm I, saying. I, and I, even he said, even yeah. you know, Picard said to one of the, nun, the nuns, the nun that he's friends with, God, I can't believe, you know, things have gotten this bad, and obviously there's so much need for resources and things. So what other species is... Like, again, I get why the Romulans are there. And but, I'm sorry uh, I never came back. Either. Well, and also... <laughs> but but also, like, why do you have that sign up? Hmm. Romulans only. It's like, uh, again, well, I didn't I see, any- see... I can see, like, if, if someone from the Federation or other people come in, you know, like like he did... I guess that are visiting the place. I yeah. can understand why they have that that sign up. What I don't get is why he tears the sign down and starts <laughs> right. a fight with these guys. Right. I'm 92. Right. I'm here to I'm here to pick a fight with all of you. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait a and minute! I didn't he, mean to fight. Yeah. <laughs> and then give him the sword, and then okay, I'll start the sword fight with you. You know, they cross swords once or twice, and then he throws it down and says no. Right. It's like, what? Well, make up your mind. What are you doing? <laughs> And then he you realized, oh, my character is supposed to be 92. Wait, sorry. Yeah. I don't know, man. Again, <laughs> the guy's moving around pretty goddamn good for a 92-year-old man. Right. Um, so, can we stop I on did... the way? I need to pee. <laughs> Several times. I, I do like that. Um, uh, and again, forgive me because I'm so bad with names and, and, and alien languages, literally. Um, the that, that thing that... that Bonds Eleanor to him, the the cause or whatever it's called. Right, right, right. Um, I, I love that it's, yeah, I love that it's a you know, it's a lost cause. Um, yeah, like a hopeless cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a hopeless cause, and and uh, um, that's you know how you get one of these people to to join you is you, you give them a hopeless cause. Um, yeah, that's. Kind but of I weird. almost kind of like that. Yeah. Oh, you do like it or you don't like it? I, it was kind of hokey, but I don't know. I, I want to see how it plays out. But, you know, do all yeah, these I other it's, people die I th- because it's a hopeless cause? Yeah, <laughs> I th- I, yeah, I think it's unnecessary puffery of, wow, what a sacrifice Highlander right. Romulan is making, Eleanor. Uh, I'm like, whatever, okay. See, yeah, but, we, we you know, on, on the writing side of things, I could see where that can kind of play into some things. Like, you know, if one of these Romulans were actually able to succeed in one of these causes – it would elevate their status, and that's why they're they're viewed the way they are. Um, you know, as yeah, it's yeah. Well, it's, it, you know. who's the patron saint of lost causes? Is it Saint Anthony? Well, I don't know. And yeah. near, near Catholicism? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, you can tell how you can tell how Catholicized I am because I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think isn't that, so, what the, yeah. is that what the Pope says? All right, you're all uh, Catholicized. All right, go yeah. ahead, and get out of here. Yeah, Be it. take some host on your way out. Thank you. <laughs> Take a handful of hosts. <laughs> nice. Now we're going to get all these Catholics. Exactly. Upset at us, I but, resent that. Uh, but um, yeah. From a writing standpoint, I could see you know you call it puffery, but I'm like, ooh, that's planting a seed for something that could be really cool. You know, in in the lore of these people, you know, kind of like almost like a Jedi Knight. You know, like they they've been exalted and raised to this status because you know if if they could succeed in this lost cause, then you know. They're looked upon like Jedi Knights or something, you know? I get it. You don't have to agree with me. No, I'm, like I said, I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. I don't disagree. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm also the, looking the for I'm, that, I'm also looking for our uh, our uh, comments beyond uh, Facebook, which is where most of the comments are. Yeah, but that annoyed me that he, you know, he decided, oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna, you know, with the Romulans. try and fulfill a death wish right before seven minutes before I'm about to be picked up by my ship. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, what little action, what a little space scenes were good. I enjoyed those; those were fine. Um, it's I, I found it funny that they're using the hologram to stay on the vineyard, 
And I, I mean that that home and that vineyard is beautiful. And yeah, well, those I, sets ain't cheap, you know, Johnny. Well, and I get that exactly, <laughs> but 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 that's well, but they they could have had that. Yeah. I mean, and again, I don't I don't mean to nitpick. They could have had that conversation on the bridge, whatever. Right. And also, um, why would why would he recreate or even the ship? Maybe again, that was must have been the emergency hospitality uh, program that. Uh, that came up with that because you know he's given the big yeah. speech. I never felt like I belonged here. Well, the 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 hologram does say that um, um, Larry and Hazel. <laughs> oh, Larry, Alfred, I like Larry. <laughs> Alfred, yeah. Let's call him Larry. Larry gave him specs um, for for everything on the vineyard. Um, well, yeah, but so why he would he said, care he thought, when he when he says the same thing? I, I never felt really at home yet, or maybe only said it to Hazel. But uh, but he yeah. said, but he says he Larry thought you would, uh, Alfred Larry. thought you would be more comfortable, Larry, like this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. No, that's fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, honestly, for I, I just think everything that they did, they probably could have done it at least a half of the time, if not th- the first fifteen minutes, and we still kind of got in a free club. But whatever. I mean, you know. And, and you know what other scene I didn't understand? Please. Um, when they were on the board cube with with uh, Romulan Spock, uh-huh. uh, people are going to hate us. <laughs> we'll keep oh, I got. I bet I know what you're about to talk about. Go on. But but the the ice skating, yes, yeah, slip and slide. Remember they were in the, in yeah. the ventilation system. Yeah, because the board. Why was when the board queen? Remember when the board queen is like slip and sliding and everything, and all the times we've seen her. Wee. <laughs> well, that's yeah, that's what they do on their off time, apparently. But it's like, but yeah, it, to what to what purpose is that slippery surface there? Right. Is that like a is that like a board well, I gag? I can understand. I board, can understand the board that, trippy, you know, the, the, they they trip the drones. <laughs> seven of <laughs> seven of twelve once again <laughs> fell on the slippery part. What a dumbass! Watch, watch, watch. We'll get her again. <laughs> ah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, but why why was that whole scene necessary? Like we already know that these two were canoodling, right. for lack of a better word, right. and and they have each other. You know, like. You know, um, at this, you know, impasse where where they're trying to get information out of each other. Why did it have to be there, and why did we need that scene? It was just it just seemed like it was just wasted. I agree, and because again, they've already had those, like you said, even in mid canoodle. I don't trust you. I don't trust you either. Right. You know. So yeah, it's whatever. All right. I mean, again, I think it just chews up time. That and you've got only ten episodes, so why not just deal with that? But whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So let's see. Oh, and I like that we got a little bit more of uh, Ramada's. Uh, I know her name. She's not really Ramada. It's close enough. Uh, <laughs> we got that. We got that video of her. We're bad check watchers. I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly, Romulan bat shit lady that that likes to play tarot cards uh yeah they they got her last transmission as a commander or whatever before she went nuts right and we still and again like she said there's no well again you never know when the romulans are telling the truth or not but yeah is there any record of what happened to the ship uh no but there might be in the cube let's go to the slip and slide and we'll we'll figure it out there in canoodle right i like i gotta tell you i am i am smitten by soji i think she's a, an adorable young actress well, that's good because I'm really spitten by uh, Romulan Spock. So exactly, there. he's hot. Yeah. He's hot. Oh, yes, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I'm not Spock. Yeah, sure. Nice going. <laughs> Again, why didn't somebody in makeup and wardrobe go? Uh, you know, he kind of looks like Ethan Peck did in season two. Yeah, we don't care. All right. No, the the whole thing with uh, um, the 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 way of absolute candor. Or absolute candor, where where they tell. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the bottled city for a second. Go yeah, on. No. What, what absolute candor are you looking for? But uh, the Romulans are not like Vulcans, where they they keep their emotions in check and stuff like that. Right. So, um, yeah. What what did that all mean, and and why Again, was it important? I, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I found it unnecessary. Maybe it will play yeah. out later. That's a very good observation. But I'm just like, oh, thank again, you. Well, well, again, I'm just rolling my eyes about. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Whatever. Because well, if hopefully, if hopefully so, they do if, build if this they, stuff in 
so that later it does come up, like you know. Well, but um, wait, but doesn't that fly in the face of that the Romulans are always so secretive? Right. That's what I was. So thinking. is it just the order? Just the the sister warriors are are Candor people, right. or you know, people of Candor. Yes, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but that's and yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like, how is this religious sect allowed to exist in such a secretive, controlled Romulan culture? But riddle me that, Batman. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. So, whatever. I. Again, I will judge. I'll be happy to truly judge it on the whole when it's done. It's one of my first complaints when there's a comic book miniseries and we're on issue two, and uh, I don't know what's going on. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I expect more from TV. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to read letters? Um, I'd rather you read them. Well, you can hear what they, they're saying. Okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, there's a lot of. I thought you. I thought you wanted to be me to read them. I don't. I, I, I don't read very well. No, no. Uh, hold on one second. What the hell just happened? It like froze. It won't give me the comments. Oh, they're there. It was just loading up. You know, if these episodes go, you know, two or three more, and we don't learn some of this stuff, I think I'm going to want the destroyer to be activated. <laughs> <So> this- <laughs> well, that's what I mean, man. I, like again. So now, and and again, all right. So I was mistaken about it being eleven episodes, ten episodes. We just had episode four. So, again, I'm no math genius, but that's 40% of the show. Mm-hmm. So we're, you know, what again, I, I just think there are a few things we should know by now. But Dave Cummings says, I'm enjoying it. After this, ep- meaning episode three with you, I would totally be down for the idea of a show or a few episodes on the expatriated uh, board. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Um, Scott Warren and... Uh, that's fine. And I'm like, uh, he goes, I think the writing's fantastic. You and the CBS trick might just have to agree to disagree. And he laughs, and I said, well, I'm glad you like it. You know, like I said, it plays like bad soap opera to me. And Scott goes, uh, oh, I know. I've been listening to your struggles with it. Okay, fine. There we go. Uh, what else? What did Mitch say here? He said, of course, Picardians of the Galaxy. Uh Oh yeah, when we when we were wondering why he had all those guns in his study, and he goes, maybe Picard has guns all over the place in case the co- competition tried to take his vineyard out. <laughs> yeah, Paul, Paul, and uh, Paul and Ernest uh, Gallo are uh, or uh, the Bartles and James guys are next to him. Yeah, I was talking yeah. to Ed the other day, and that Pickard's really pissing me off. Um, uh, Bola. He's, he's out to guess it. Oh, and then he goes, would, uh, Scott Warren asked, uh, would I say that Picard is better or worse than Adam Driver Smalls? <laughs> oh, man. Come on. I why, said, why do we got to oh, go no. there? I said better, <laughs> and I said, again, and I believe this, I think Star Trek Picard is still a lot better than Discovery. Yes, I do as well. So let's I do. I, 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 like, I like the character a lot, so I'm willing to forgive a lot, but uh, some of the stuff is starting to, like, you know, creep in there, and you know me. I'm usually more forgiving than you are about this stuff. But uh, I want that you know, money. when he rips down that that sign and he sits down, it's like, "Give me a drink." You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, I, exactly. What you and he was what totally you... an old man ordering soup at that point. Yeah. Chicken noodle soup <laughs> now. Crackers. I want crackers. Yeah, where the hell's the crackers on the table? What do you think I'm going to steal? Uh, I, w- I want to say your name right, Mark LaFerrari. I hope I just did. All the scenes with Picard in Picard are great. The non-Picard scenes are hit and miss, but there's some hits. All right, fair enough. Well, I Martin think Pirro goes, I agree. Really to, to, to Picard. What's and, that? And I, th- I think the scenes with Picard are due to uh, Patrick Stewart. Just of course. Him, yeah. Yeah. Although, again, and uh, I think I was talking to Mitch Alec earlier today, or texting him, and he's like, it was like... Uh, they were all acting in a bad play, and there were times that Patrick Stewart's lines came very loudly. Senator, yeah. I implore you. Yeah, it's like yeah, it, it, he's kind Is of in a different play. Ready? Yes, yes. What's that? Is my soup ready? Loud. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, I implore you. Use the oyster crackers rather <laughs> than the full size saltines. <laughs> uh, 
Martin Piero says, I agree. At first I thought the slow pace was to let the characters breathe and have some room for growth. But the painful truth is the writers seem to enjoy focusing on their contrived and unnecessarily complex plot as opposed to telling a compelling story. While I do enjoy the show and most of the acting, I'm left of a feeling of this could be better. Yep. Yep. I agree with you. Um, David Gallagher, the fine uh, write, comic book writer. Oh, I like that uh, guy. I like that guy as well. The scenes uh, that are his are brilliant. I don't find the writing muddled, but there's way too many uh, incidental characters. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. John Gandor. Uh, I'm with John, and I thought the writing would be better with Michael Shabon involved. Still all in, but hoping it'll pick up a bit. Uh, Dave Stone, Stewart's performance is the only thing keeping me around. Carlos Carmona says, I'm liking it. I'm surprised I didn't hear complaining about them going back uh, to some nostalgia, like some some co- complaint about The Mandalorian. I'm shrugging. Uh, Vishal Kocha uh, says, agree. Uh, good to see him back and the callbacks back, but generally still hasn't gotten me that excited story-wise. And Gary Lima says, so basically they should have just put it out on a regular TV network. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree. I wonder where yeah, it's going. But, Go ahead. Well, I, you know, I, I know why they're not doing it, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're looking to make their, their pay service. But it's just, right. I, I think you need to give us, for those of us that have been with Trek for a while, you need to give us something more than, and I understand their, wor- their world building. Yes, so to speak, you know, like the the story there there, but it's just a little too much. You're not giving us enough for for what you're trying to do. I think. Agreed. I also believe that, like uh, the good the good fight, which is the sequel to the Good Wife, that's on streaming. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but this summer, a regular CBS network was showing it as a summer show, and I could easily see them doing that with Pickard. Uh, as they prepare for the second season, and showing it out of the right after after they've already made the money, uh, or even a couple years down the right, line, I can see them doing it. Right. Well, the Good Wife is on what, or the Good Fight is on what season now? Two or three? I want to say at least three. Might even yeah, be so four. They, ju- they just showed the first season. Right. Right. Uh, over the summer. Right. Right. But also, I would think I would assume. Because and by the way, the good the good fight is a great show. It's an excellent show. Um, I'm ready to watch it eventually. I'm a big maybe. fan. And Christine Bernanski and Delroy Lindo and the young actors and our buddy uh, Niabe Niabe is in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, it's a very good show. Um, but yeah, so I, but and also I because you know like you said yeah they probably were going on the third or fourth season but they uh, yeah they're I mean they're still trying to get people to jump in and join unless also. Now that Viacom and CBS have re-emerged, who knows what That's right, they did, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, it, all the tracks are back together. Yes, at least in theory, yes. Um, mm-hmm. It's weird, though, because then again, there's also theories that as these secret hideout produced shows, that's the name of the production company that is part of J.J.'s contract with the movies, um, but it's the television division, that as long as uh, they keep making new shows and that they do well, that they could kind of still do Star Trek their way and it might eliminate other producers. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. But um, that's that's one of the, the uh, rumor theories and stuff. Uh, okay, Bernard Binder says, I wonder where it's going, but calling a highly decorated admiral J.L., Seeing a dry herb vaporizer and cigar smoking in the same episode was odd. It all feels so contemporary, like the writers can't imagine what a better world could look like. It's like the opposite of Roddenberry. I didn't disagree with some of that. Mm. Uh, um, and another talk, Steve Rockwood. He also uh, Steve Rockwood real fast, and then I want to hear what you think. Mm. Yeah, he's like. I also think it's uh, kind of. I, I was hoping I wasn't the only one who found it weird. His name's John Luke, not JL. It's right. even the same amount of syllables to say it. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah. yeah, well, on the whole JL thing, like he's telegraphing that he, you know, when when he goes to that planet to pick up uh, Sister Boy Eleanor, right. um, that he may, he may never be back again. Um, but she calls him JL again at some right. point. 
and and that took me out of it. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, and I don't disagree. Whatever, it just means that they had a close relationship. Right, you could get yeah. that personal with them. Fine, whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But number one couldn't call him that. I was going to say the same thing, man. Riker never needed to call him that. None of, none of the, you know. Hey, how's it going, JL? Watch your mouth, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JL, I sense data. Go fuck yourself with the JL shit. Because now on R-rated CBS All Access, apparently the word fuck is very used now in the 24th century. Right? They, they broke a couple of them out again. Yes, yes, they did. Or didn't, maybe I'm getting, uh, yeah, I'm probably getting my shows confused. Didn't somebody get flipped off? Uh, I'm probably confusing my show. I want, I want to say yes. Didn't didn't Eleanor as a kid flip off those kids that were making fun of him? Maybe. I can. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's another thing. I like the greeting that uh, Sister Warrior and uh, and Picard gave each other. They had the secret Romulan handshake. Yeah. They're like, it starts as a prayer, and then their hands are open and stuff. And by yeah, the way, well, Jolan True, which that go, that's a callback. That's that they yeah. they said that in Next Generation. That's all oh, over the place on that uh, Spock two parter in uh, Next Gen. Well, there you Jolan go, Jolan True. I do like but, though uh, that they they every time he says it, there's the uh, subtitle. Hello, yeah, hello, hello. It's like I think yeah. we could, <laughs> I think we got to figure that out. It's kind of like when, when we never everyone... needed subtitles for Aloha, <laughs> but thank you or Shalom. But okay, sure. When, when all the Romulans are eyeing him and get out of our town, Romulans only. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you think he's saying as opposed to hello, like greetings or hello or something like that? Motherfuckers, hello! <laughs> <laughs> are all these people hard of hearing? <laughs> Lib dicks, welcome! <laughs> I'm Jean-Luc Picard, perhaps you've heard of me. I'm here but to the... chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all <laughs> out of bubblegum. <laughs> Uh, Cully Hanner, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, has joined the uh, audience. So far, I'm enjoying it for the Picard-centric stuff. To be honest, it's when we get to the stuff on the board cube that I start looking at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dennis McGlynn says, The Borg have always seemed boring, even back in the next-gen days. If we had cell phones back then, I would have looked at one, too. That's very funny. And then uh, Now, Scott Larson, uh, Chicago independent comic creator. He's like, it's a storytelling. It's very complex. Instead of straightforward narrative, you're almost forced to watch each episode twice to catch everything. I'm enjoying it so much, though, that I'm happy to watch it twice. And I said, Scott, lots of bad dialogue. Sorry, I don't see it as complex. Just confused. And once again, people writing Trek that don't seem to understand how the Trek universe works. And Scott wrote part of Beck. After multiple viewings of the Star Wars prequels, I've become immune to bad dialogue, laughing. <laughs> oh, no. Don't I'm actually immune. more disturbed by the constant swearing in these new shows and wish they would stop, and I agree with that. Um, but then, yeah, he's just like, uh, he says, I don't think it's lousy writing as much as a reflection of how people talk nowadays, including the bad language. Our society's really screwed up so in so many ways. I honestly think it's a mirror of that. The new Twilight Zone is doing the same thing, and I'm like... Here's another bad example. I'm like, the only mention of the Romulan Free State, as I said earlier, was when uh, the Trill said it. I, and I, and like I said, compare that to, and as I told you, I don't think I made that point. I'm like, compare that to the six minutes of, of the full six-minute scene we get in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered right. Country, after Praxis explodes. And now that literally happens in the first ten minutes of the movie. So it's like, okay... You start with Sulu, the Praxis explodes, don't come, you know, leave us alone, we know what we're doing. Did our, do we already have, I, I think we had this conversation off the air. Right. Cut to cut to Starfleet, the, the Klingon Empire has 50 years to live. Here's a, there, our special envoy that's going to tell us more. Spock gives his speech. Then he and Kirk talk even more. They're animals. Jim, right. they're dying. Let them die. It's like, right. we got all that in the first and, 10 minutes of a two-hour movie. We are over two hours now in Picard. And like I said, we've had one brief muttering of the Romulan Free State. And at no point did Kirk turn to Spock and say, fuck you, Spock. Let them die. He didn't say that. He did say let them die, though. No, but he didn't um, say fuck you. No, he didn't say fuck you. That's true. <laughs> Although, at the end, I well, love you know, it. I, I was going to say, in, in, uh, um, uh, in, uh, 
uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm forgetting the subtitle, but the the Voyage Home, I think, with with uh, uh, Star Trek the, Four, yeah, Star Trek Four with the whales. That's what made Double Dumbass on you, right? Right. So well, <laughs> worked so well because yeah. you know you're not used to hearing the swearing, and when he or, does, like, you know, well, Double Dumbass on you, <gasps> like he, oh my yeah, gosh, but it, that's a lot softer sure. than fuck you. I mean, it could, yeah, hey, but fuck I mean, you, no, asshole. but even that was like it was funny, but it was. The shock of it and, and double the yeah, but, it too, but that made it work. Absolutely, yeah. But it was goofy and also like as opposed to flipping him off, he had both hands up. That was right. his gesture of like up, up yours. And yeah. also the best is when uh, and 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 Spock even calling him on it. And I mean that you know I mean that's the thing. Like at least somebody's calling him on it. Like is that really necessary or whatever? But. Uh, later in, in Star Trek Four, when he's like, Spock, I need those computations. One damn minute, Admiral. <laughs> exactly. And it freaks out. <laughs> See, that's, that's how you awesome. write. Yeah. And it's Spock. I mean, that's the thing. You know, oh, and I was going to say at the end of Star Trek Six, this is where I thought you were going, when they, at the very end of the movie, it's like Starfleet has ordered us to come in home uh, and be decommissioned. And he's like, if I were human, I believe go to hell would be my response. Right. And everyone looks up and he's like, if I were human. Yeah. Guess what, Spock? Everybody's human. I yeah. find that comment now, insulting. Yeah, if they did that, <laughs> if they did that movie now, it'd be I, I'd tell them to go fuck off. You know, I I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. And I would think I would think Nimoy would be like, I'm not saying fuck off. Spock wouldn't say fuck off. Right. So, but go to hell and double dumbass is a little lighter than that. Um, John Price, who on uh, Medium dot com wrote incredibly great uh, essays about Star Trek's uh, Discovery, the first two seasons, so much so that I had him on the show last year talking about season two of Discovery. And I don't know if... I I assume he's doing it for Picard as well. I haven't checked. But he said the first three episodes should have been two condensed episodes focusing entirely on Picard and Earth. Uh, They're trying to integrate too many subplots at once, and it's a bit muddled. Picard is the focus, so focus on him. Mm Mm-hmm. And then my buddy Rob Burnett says uh, the Romulan hit squad aren't even up to the standards of mid '80s canon films. And I and I made the point again. I'm like, do we even know the current status of the Romulan Empire at Picard? Is the existence of the Borg cube generally known by the galaxy? How we are still don't know that. Yeah. You know, and he, and I said, shouldn't we have known that, uh, you know, or should we have had that spelled out in the first episode? And Rob says, why, yes, John, we should have. Mm. So how about that? And then I had a great You're exchange. Not wrong. I had a great exchange with Lenny Cooper. And Lenny, Lenny's like, I think you're being too hard on Picard, the show. Be careful you don't scare it away, and we're only left with Discovery and short checks. I still enjoyed your recent up with Franco. Putting on my well-worked uh, wor- uh, Trek apologist hat uh, to address some of your concerns. Hold on. Uh, I don't think it makes any sense to say that Romulan computers are basically just fancy abacuses. I don't think we can infer Robulans hate all cybernetics, AIs, only sentient or close to AI. It could be all AI, but I'm not sure they said that. I mean, the motion sensor on my house alarm system is a form of AI. AI. Wouldn't that run afoul of Romulan prejudices? Also, go ahead. Okay. No, I was going to say, except they said it in the episode. Well, that was my point back. But here, he's like, why assume the Romulans have always hated AI? Maybe it's recent. Maybe they suffered an attack similar to the, uh, I don't know what the MATS attack is. Um, I don't know. Any, uh, they reacted even harsher than the Federation. Maybe that's the Mars attack. Or maybe they hate it because the Mars attack stopped the relief effort and caused billions of extra Romulans deaths when their sun blew up. At the level, as for the level of writing... While it can be mem- melodramatic at times, I certainly don't think it stands out compared to bad TOS, TNG, DS9, etc. And Patrick Stewart raises uh, it all anyway. Finally, I point out that La- uh, Loris and Alfred are in the Countdown comic. Yeah, we said that, though, that part. Yeah. Overall, it's a one. It's wonderful to look forward to new real Star Trek weekly. Thank heavens they didn't drop the whole season one in one shot. Wish The Expanse had done its recent season the same way. And I write back, like you said, I'm like, Laris says to Picard in episode two, have you ever noticed the complete absence of right. artificial life in Romulan culture? We don't have androids, AI, or study cybernetics. I'm like, that doesn't sound like some recent shift. 
I said, rewatch the episode because it's there. And I'm like, and you're right, Lenny. It doesn't make sense that Romulan computers are only used for numeric purposes. But that's also a direct quote from Laris. Right. That makes no sense. So the only explanation is shitty writing. Franco and I are teasing that compared comparing them to abacuses and calculators. Right. But isn't that basically the same thing? Yeah. No, I was serious about that. I wasn't teasing. <laughs> and then he goes, <laughs> per, and then he says, perhaps uh, Hazel was exaggerating or being sarcastic, mark, mocking of her people. Wouldn't that be consistent with her character? And I'm like, I'm sorry. I think you're trying to find excuses to justify poor story choices from a dialogue standpoint that fly in the face of other Romulan stories we've had in the past. I'm like, and then I said, look, if it doesn't bother you, that's cool. But I'm like, yeah. uh, you know, it's it, for me, it confuses me. Yes. I tend to agree with you. John Price chimes in and says the AI thing is so weird because it's superfluous knowledge. Even the big bad is some AI the Romulans hate. Even if the big bad is some AI the Romulans hate, I doubt it'll pay off the idea that they've always hated AI. It's just unnecessary to make it so absolute. I agree. Uh, And he says, I'm not saying you're necessarily wrong as to my characterizations. Lenny is saying this. But still, my main point is the jury should be out because... In contrast to traditional episodes, this really is just a ten-part story. Is it though? Know. Well, I suppose it is, but again, it's like I hear, and then I said, uh, like I, I made my point about how the Romulan Free State is uh, so briefly mentioned and everything. Um, yeah, you know. Now and then, Bernard Bender goes, "Who cares about the Romulans?" A federation of at least a hundred different species suddenly declared, uh, decided to other. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either. I guess basically like uh, that um, all these mem- members of the Romulans are like, yeah, fuck the fuck, the, or members of the Federation are like, fuck, fuck the Romulans. Why is it necessary, Lenny, as to know the current state of the Romulan government? This is a story as we've seen it so far. It's about Picard's reawakening. How is that essential to Picard at this point? Seems to me the essential point is that the Romulans are after the daughter of Picard's dear friend. They've already thrown a heap of info about the universe. Perhaps there's a plot reason to hold back the one piece you're curious about or perhaps it's just not important to the story that they're telling. I don't see how you can conclude 30% into the story that it's bad writing to hold back and not address this. And I'm like, well, again, what's the common knowledge right now of the Romulans' current state of of existence in the galaxy? I don't think that's unreasonable to ask that. Like, I, I made the point, I'm like, you know, Americans, we don't know the inner workings of how this uh, Russian government works. We do know Putin's in charge, and it's Putin's people. We haven't heard that yeah. yet. Right. And again, as viewers, I think I, I think it's okay to, like, just give us a little more clarity of, is it is this an entire Romulan plot? Are the sister warriors in on this plot? I don't believe they are. But again, yeah. it's like, okay, you know, give us, just, like... Even on the surface, give us a, a fake puppet Romulan government right. that's trying to make peace with the Federation and going, oh, no, everything's fine. No, 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 no don't pay attention. No, you know, everything's okay. Yeah. Two, uh, two things about that. First of all, it, it can't be every every Romulan because they've been dumped on these planets and forgotten about, basically. Well, like, okay. Like the then. ones that Picard tried to pick a fight with in that bar. <laughs> And, and so my second point is maybe the bad guy is uh, Baltar from uh, ah, Star Galactica. Ah, 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 ah. So. Well, to, but to your honest first part, I understand that there were, these refugees have been displaced, but it's not like te- technology in general has been shut down. So even if they were scattered around, there has to, first of all, the, the size of the Romulan Empire. Uh, I, I don't believe that you know their only hope was to go to the Federation. Maybe it was. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess because again, that was what the s- status was of the Klingon Empire. But I, I don't believe they wouldn't stay out of contact, and that there wouldn't be some uh, attempt. Again, well, there's a, there is a Romulan know, free technology. state. What does that What does that represent? It is in. I mean, that's the thing. They did the the point that I also made to to uh, Lenny was I'm like, but they did say it. She says it, the Trill says it in the thing, and obviously something's going on where she was rejected and now she's approved, and then again it was by this Romulan free state. What do they represent? Are they are they the, 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 the mustache twirling bad guys? Okay, again, I would think that if they are well, if they're known well enough to recruit 
other species and stuff. They have to be known in the galaxy. And again, there has to at least be a public face of, oh, nothing to see here. Every, we're trying to pick all, up our lives. But then also, why, why are all these Romulans on this planet totally forgotten about? Like, why, why hasn't the Romulan Free State recruited some of these people? Well, maybe they don't have the resources to... Yeah, but that's the thing. Maybe they don't have the... Re- Again, we don't know. And But I was right. going to say, maybe they don't have the resources to... But if you're, if you're taking an alien species to, to do this work, well, only, why can't you get them? Well, my, my suggestion in terms of why they're going to other species is to support this idea of, hey, we don't know what we're doing when it comes to cybernetics. Because the troll doctor was another cybernetic that, expert yeah. and everything. So that that I suppose, but again, and I mean that's the thing. It's like, is this uh, how public? Like, it has to be public knowledge enough to recruit these other species. So that that's where I'm confused about is if this is a secret project, how are the other species being made aware of it and being recruited? Right. Yeah, because she does say that. Her petition was denied, and then she there right. she is. So right, there's so, a paper yeah. trail. Well, yeah, yeah, and like you said too, Hugh's like, "Hey, I'm in charge of this. Back off." Right. So it's like, uh, what? So I, I would imagine, obviously, with Jerry Ryan showing up at the end, we'll learn a lot more next episode. But isn't right. that sad? We still have to like wait like an ad- so not another two hours before we like know what the fuck's going on. Mm-hmm. Whatever. And then we'll be up to episode six, seven. True. And only a few more to go. Right. Oh, and then, uh, now Chris Erickson makes an interesting point. Uh, here's something. Uh, I think, uh, I keep thinking that Dodge's mother isn't real, but instead an implanted memory that was glitching. That would explain why the scene conversation seems so clunky. Uh, mm-hmm. Lenny said, I think she's just an internal program a subroutine, I guess, that runs for the sisters under circumstances. I completely agree with that. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I mean, it clearly, and like I said, when she's all panicky about Dodge, it's like, oh, don't worry, honey. Oh, by the way, I had the car fixed. Yeah. Well, yeah. Also, yeah I, was, I was just going to say it also uh, explains why she falls asleep and conks out. Yeah. Right, right, absolutely. No, but isn't it interesting that Soji... Like, Dodge wasn't aware of Soji as far as I could tell, right? She never talked about her sister. It well, was no. Agonist that gave us the, hey, these were made in twos. Right, but but Dodge does, uh, uh, so she does know about. Soji did know about. Right, about Dodge, Soji yeah. does know. And that, you know, whatever. But, and again, she was programmed to have this different life. And that was another wrinkle that we learned, obviously, but we kind of already knew it. That she didn't exist before three years earlier or whatever, and right. uh, and also I liked when uh, Romulan she, Spock was asking about her father and everything. Right, and and Romulan Spock was asking her those questions, and she she got very defensive when he you know what do you don't believe me she says, but is she hiding something because she knows that three years ago she didn't exist or you know that well, that brought up so. that think, in my mind. What's that? I think I think she believes her fake uh, story. Just like Dash did. Yeah, but he questions her and, and gives her information about her not being there right on that three one years trip. before. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, but again, um, yeah, I guess he's testing her limits before, you know, program activated, kill. Right, right. <laughs> kill bot, kill bot. Yeah. Crush, kill, destroy. Which is from Lost in Space with a robot. Um, so there you go. Those are, those are some obs- observations, if you will, my buddy. Uh, but there's some observations from uh, the peanut gallery. The Picard- are there Picardians of the galaxy? Yeah. Data. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Again, happy that it's on. Can't wait for next week. I got more questions. Uh, I like uh, Highlander Romulan. I like mm-hmm. I think yes. I, I think Agonis is a synth. I think uh, I think Bruce Maddox is going to be proved to be a secret Rom- Romulan if he's even alive. I really, really, really hope we get to see Bruce Maddox. That would be great. Maybe he's going to be a robot too, just like Roger Corby was in that first season of uh, uh, the original series. I am Roger Corby. Ask me any question. Equate. Transmit. 
Christine, help me. <laughs> but don't you understand, Roger? You're not you anymore. Oh, why don't you go marry Roddenberry and shut up? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess meet us back here next week for more. Then, yeah, I there guess. you go. Why not? I guess. All right, here's the music. <laughs> <laughs>